coming up on Man Enough. I put a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect. I think that that's one of my kind of central traumas, like to be a perfectionist, to be good, to be a good man, to like make sure I never offend anybody. Or if I do offend somebody that, that I need to apologize because I don't want anyone to think of me a certain way. We are, are not allowing ourselves to be human. Just because you can write the book on masculinity doesn't mean you've arrived. <laughs> Being man enough, what does that mean? It's really manly to mess up, admit you're wrong, and then grow. I couldn't accept that I was evil, so maybe I'm broken, but those broken things could be corrected. Intimacy between a father and a son is me just wanting to like put my head in your lap. I love you, son. You haven't called me a benevolent sexist, but my experience is women are better. Even if it's a positive, it's still not equality. I don't blame men for that. I just blame the system. This is Man Enough. Hey everybody, welcome back to Man Enough. I'm Jamie Heath. I'm Liz Plank. How you doing, dear? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, uh, it's a little bittersweet date. <laughs> 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 Do you know why that is, Liz? <laughs> I can smell why. It smells um, good. We have a special guest. We have a special guest. Who is that special guest? The person whose podcast this is. Oh, um, what? this yeah. is all of our podcasts. <laughs> Hi, I'm here too. Oh, let's try again. Hey everybody, welcome to Man Enough. I'm Jamie Heath. I'm Liz Plank. And I'm the special guest. <laughs> what's oh, your name? <laughs> what's your name? Yeah, who are you? Uh, I'm Justin Baldoni. Justin Baldoni. Um, I see. We barely recognize you because you don't have a man bun and a full beard all the way down to your waist. So um, <laughs> does that make you happy? Actually, it does. I think your face I, is I feel nice. like we had two two good years of Jamie just making fun of my hair. Incessantly. Yeah. Um, Although you did stay at my house last night because you're in town. You stayed with me and you needed a hair dryer this morning. Um, so now you'd have a man bun, but you need a hair dryer. Well, oh. we were rushing out the door and my hair was wet. Yeah. And I was going to wear a hat, but our producer said, you can't wear a hat I see. to cover your face. I, I always wear hats. Yeah. I think we didn't and want then, you to wear hats. So that and we now could I have see. this hair. Th I don't know what's happening with my hair. It's just <laughs> we didn't like want a, you to, it's just We wanted thing. people to see your hair and not your man bun. The fact that your hair is no longer a man Got bun. It. But anyway. Oh, so that was really from you. You didn't want me to That's wear right. that. Yeah. Right. Well, but anyways, welcome back. <laughs> hey. Hi. 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 Forget about him. Hi, Liz. Hi, Justin. <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. It's so good to see both of you together. I think Jamie's different. Jamie's a little different. What do you mean? When you're not around Justin. Don't oh, you think? Am I? What do you mean? I don't know. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I, I don't have him to pick on and have fun. Yeah, so, yeah, that's uh, is he not as joyful? No, he's so... Is he still joyful? He's Oh, well, not as joyful as when he's with you, Got for it. sure. There for you sure. go. 100%. Um, answer, and I feel like he, you're always on his mind. And Aww, now you're here. That's so sweet. You guys are doing amazing. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. By the way, last time I saw you was at your birthday party in New York. It was. Mm. That was so fun. That was so fun. That was so fun. And I love that you came. Of course, um, I, of course I came. Everyone was obsessed with um, Justin at my birthday party. Mm. Did I tell you? No. Yeah, uh, everyone was no? like uh, very, very obsessed. And then we FaceTimed Jamie at my birthday party. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Well, you, let me tell you a quick story. Um, so um, we're in the middle of a, a strike right now. So um, Justin, of course, you have been absent because you've been standing in solidarity with the unions and um, doing We just wanted to make sure that it was completely okay for me to do the podcast. And yeah. we found out that it was. And that so was, I'm here. So you're uh -huh. here. But before there was a strike, we were doing a movie. Um. This is really interesting for me. All right. There were hundreds of fans standing on the street while we were filming oh. just to get a glimpse and like talk to Justin and our cast and such. And of course, I'm going around and as one of the producers of the film, I'm also speaking to the crowd and making them feel welcome. I've been out there for two, three this hours. This is a great times. story. I know what I know what story this <laughs> I'm is. I'm out there two or three hours, like <laughs> you know, hey guys, what do you guys want to know about Justin? What are you guys doing here for? They just want, they're waiting for a picture of Justin. I was like, well, thanks for being so quiet. And others, but sure. And I say, um, after about three hours, I'll tell you what, since you guys are standing here waiting for Justin, if you can tell me who I am, I'll single-handedly <laughs> take you and introduce you to Justin. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, after hours, all these hands raised up. And they're like, yeah, I don't know, you're Jamie Heath. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> this whole time you know who I am? Do you want a picture with me? They were like, no, that's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're Jamie Heath. You do the podcast. Yeah, they knew who I was. Yeah. 
and never alluded, didn't care this much. All he cared about was just <laughs> That's kind of nice, though. I feel like that's where I want to be, where, like, people respect and listen to you and value you, but they don't want to get in your, you know, your private space. They could have wanted one picture. Yes, I sure. But you can still go out to brunch, and Justin can. I, I know. I'm just having fun. That's um, funny. Anyways, the point of it is that you had said people at your party yes. were um, obsessed with Justin. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the truth is, this is why, why am I so uncomfortable right well, now? Well, because we're giving you some acknowledgement yeah, praise, and I think validation. that is something actually um, <sighs> speaks to you. And the work that you've done also is to know that you are indeed enough. And sometimes one of the ways that we um, see that is when it's reflected back to us. I and reminded, that. and we have indeed missed you. Oh, we look. This show's not about you. We know that we're speaking to different people so that they can learn and um, and just have yeah. a conversation. But you do bring a spirit and a vulnerability and a care for this subject. That's really sweet. Um, that has been missed. You know, I've I've been first of all, it's been really sweet for me because I I in my life aspire to build things that um, are greater than me, that outlive me and where I could potentially be dispensable versus indispensable versus like something where I have to be in the center of it. I must like, it, the, without me, the show doesn't go on because I don't know, I, I, I consider this work and all the work that we do at Wayfair Studios, but specifically this kind of like a nonprofit. Whereas how awesome would it be to not have a job? How awesome would it be for us to not have anything to talk about as it relates to masculinity. Right, right. Right, so that we're just in such a good place in the world where like everyone's like, this is old news. Right, like we're not men, are, men are doing awesome. Yeah. Men aren't abusing, men aren't sexually assaulting, men aren't starting, like we're doing great. Mm. Like men are awesome, like old news, find, find a new thing. Yeah. That would be amazing, mm-hmm. um, but that's not where we are. So, but just to know that the show was doing so well and you guys were like just killing it made me feel so good. Hmm. Um, because on one hand, there was a part of me that was like, you know, the ego part of me, hmm. the little boy was like, oh, wait, do they miss me? Did I actually add anything? And then the larger <laughs> voice was like, oh my God, I'm so happy that this exists right. and that I had a part of starting it hmm. and that it can go on and go on and go yeah. on. Can you share? I know we want to talk about a few subjects because it's a host only. It's just the three of us. Maybe you can share a little bit about, um, this idea of being a work in progress. So you wrote this book, started a podcast, you're known and seen to be someone that cares about this. You've done TED Talks, things of that nature. Um, Liz, of course, you're in this space, but we've never arrived. We can, um, for me, being someone that's very um, spiritual, tries to be as spiritual as I can, has a religion that I'm faithful to, do my best to, and I stumble every single day, never arrived. Just because I believe in something doesn't mean I'm always going to live up to it every day. I certainly don't. So in this space, there's no way that you can live up to everything that you are offering people. No. Um, well, uh, uh, what's interesting about being gone, I, don't know, I feel like my, my like, I want to like no, mess with my hair. My, my, I'm so used to having the bun and like, <laughs> I, I see my hair in the corner of my eye right now. The phantom um, bun syndrome. I know, phantom bun syndrome. <laughs> it's a real thing. It was like it a is. limb. Yeah. Um, no, it's, that's a great question. You know, having been gone for a while, um, and and working and just being extraordinarily busy and being away from my family, I was away from my family for a long time, and um, there was a lot of pressure. Um, I found myself thinking about that a lot. But you know, when I started this work, the intention was to say, "Hey." <laughs> I have not figured this out. I am on a journey to figure this out. Masculinity is something that I am trying to understand and I don't have it figured out. So don't look at me like an expert. I'm not your teacher. Mm. I'm like all my books, both books, the podcast from, from the beginning, like we are works in progress. We're gonna learn in real time. And that was what was so great about this show was we were giving people a chance to show a few men and yourself, Liz, like, hey, we're all having these really weird, uncomfortable conversations about this stuff that it seems to be taboo in real time. And that's how I approach my work. That's also how I approach my life. Like I am, I am so far from perfect. And yet I do think that 
um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect. I think that that's one of my kind of central traumas, like to be a perfectionist, to like to to be good, to be a good man, to like to make sure I never offend anybody, or if I do offend somebody, that, that I need to apologize because I don't want anyone to 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 think of me a certain way. And and, and there's mom issues there, and there's things you know like I wanted I wanted there's faith issues, there's all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of uh, enmeshment in how the pressure cooker created Justin. Baldoni, right? Like how the unique situation that I was raised with in my unique family life and circumstance and faith and all of these various things in, in middle school and high school created me. What I said at the end of my book, and I wrote this at the end of my book, Emily read my book and she said, baby, this is really good, but now I think you need to read your own book, right? Mm -hmm. And it was so true because this was the spirit in which I wrote the book that I rewrote the final chapter and I included that as mm -hmm. in the chapter because I wanted men to know that just because you can write the book on masculinity doesn't mean you've arrived. Mm -hmm. It means you're gonna have to go reread your own book, not just once, but over and over and over again. In the same way that in marriage, you have to reinvent the marriage and you have to almost repropose and refall in love because you're married to somebody that's gonna be a different person in six months and two years and five years. We have to do that to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And while I've been gone, you know, I was, confronted with some real situations in which I had to reread my own book. And I had to be like, oh, wow. Mm. Because of the unique situation that I was in, so many traumas came up that I was resorting to like seventh grade vocabulary. And like literally the seventh grade Justin who was um, in that moment in the driver's seat in whatever situation I was in, was in control. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that until afterwards. And thank God for incredible women who were able to mirror me and give me feedback, I was able to go, oh, wait, I'm not myself right now. And that happened quite a few times while I've been gone. Thank God for my wife mm -hmm. and my family and my best friends who were like, hey, Jay, what's going on? You okay? And I had to reread my own book. And I say this uh, metaphorically in many ways. I didn't literally go back and reread my book, <laughs> but I read other people's books yeah. and listened to other people's books. Um, and dug deep and meditated and prayed a lot and had to go in and go like, oh, wait, I'm off course. Mm -hmm. I need to, I need to course correct here. And oh, you know what? I shouldn't have said that. Why did I say that? Let me go in and talk to the part of me that felt defensive in that moment or insecure in that moment. And why did I say that? Why did I do that? And I think we all have these moments. I think we all have these moments every single day in our lives where we're in a situation and we act in a way that really isn't who we are. Or we say something that maybe we would have never said in that mm. moment, but we were doing it because we wanted to impress somebody. And we have to take a step back and like yeah. recalibrate and go, oh, oh, I was scared. Mm. Oh, I was, I was, fear was running the show there. Oh, I was insecure that I wasn't enough in that. That's why I said that. And then find grace. There you go. Like, oh, I'm not a terrible person. I'm a fucking work in progress. I'm a human. I'm a human. So I, I guess this rant is like, I, mm. yeah, I've had a lot of situations over the last six months where I've really had to go into the darkness, into the parts of myself that maybe I thought were more healed than they were and find compassion and grace and love and, and hold that little boy that maybe said the thing that he shouldn't have said, or maybe reacted in a way that he shouldn't have, or maybe, you know, uh, barked at somebody when he mm. could have been more patient and give that little boy the love that he didn't get when he was that age. Um, and that's gonna have to keep happening over the course of my life. And uh, that's why that's that's why we're here. And I wanted to share that. And thank you for, for bringing so it up because did. I'm not perfect. I'm gonna fuck up, I'm gonna make mistakes. We all are, we have not arrived. And yet I think what matters is how do we come back? How do we hold ourselves accountable when we're faced with that? And that's something that I'm working on every day. What I think about, and, and Liz, I'd love for you, if you don't mind in a moment to maybe share some of your own not mm -hmm. having not arrived and your work in progress and things of that nature. Cause I think for our listeners, for ourselves to be reminded that while so many people want to be better to not then think we are not advancing when we stumble to not then put ourselves and say, well, I, I'm a failure or I'm not good enough because we stumble. Mm. 
Um, you could be working on your marriage every day and making progress, and then you're going to screw up really badly. And it doesn't mean it defines you. It does mean that you have to deal with that yeah. and make adjustments. I even think screw screw up is such an intense word. Like stumble. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. It just seems like we we are are not allowing ourselves to be human. And I, and I mean that like individually, like we hold ourselves to this high standard where like when we make mistakes, we beat the shit out of ourselves. So mm. mistakes f may, may be a better word than screw up. I just, sure. I just, the energy around screw up Great. feels like I want to like, yeah, like, I hear that. Like it's like a, like a almost masochistic, like I want to mm. beat myself up because I screwed up. My, my little boy is five and he has a tendency um, to, it's like boys do this a lot, blame and shame, right? It's like, I'm bad or, or, and I, I'll see him do it a little bit. And oh, I, I'm, at one time he told me like, oh, I'm, I'm a bad kid. And it was almost like he, what he really wanted was for me to hug him and tell him that he, I love him no matter what he does. And that's what I did because that's the way God sees us. I'm, I'm learning so much about parenting, thinking about God. Like there's so much, and it doesn't matter if you believe in God, the universe, whatever you believe in, but there's so much forgiveness and grace and compassion in all of the religions of the world and all of the histories of all the greatest religions. It's all about the most compassionate, the most merciful. And yet we don't do that for our children and we don't do that for ourselves. Hmm. So in that moment, when my little boy tells me he's bad, I say, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. It's okay that you did that. What are you feeling? And I try to go in and then I'm like, oh shit, I got to do that to myself. No. That's how I have to treat myself. Anyways, so mm -hmm. back to Liz. Yeah. Well, it's so funny. We're talking about works in progress. And I literally am wearing a necklace that says WIP, which is work in progress. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Um, is this, that from your line? Is that it your? It is. Well, I didn't. It's from Litzy, the company with with that, with which I have my Yet Let Boys Cry line. But they, oh. they sent me this recently because I brought it up um, somewhere else. And they were like, we actually have a work in progress necklace so that you remember. I love that. One. We're all. We'll get you one. Yeah. Easy. Um, and. What I've been reflecting on recently is like, even when I make mistakes, my mistakes are perfect, right? That even again, when we screw up, when that those things are, are actually us being on our path, not yeah. off of our path. And Jamie actually helped me so much this summer, uh, often, and you would have uh, honestly uh, also helped me because I'm sure you would have um, piled on to me at that time <laughs> with what I was doing. But I, yeah, I... For me, it was a lot of like still, yeah, in the sort of like dating and, and relationship world of just, uh, you know, wanting to be with someone who was like completely unavailable. And I wouldn't even have said it that way, but that's what Jamie told me. He was like, oh, like I told him his like long story with all these details and twists and turns, like, but like this thing is happening and then like this thing happened and then like he said this and Jamie was like, oh, he's, 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 he's unavailable. And, and, and he's like, that's it. Like you don't have to make this about anything else. And, and it's not about you. It's not about him. It's like, he's unavailable. And then you just, that's it. And take the, the, the sort of drama out of it. That was really an important point for me because that's when I realized, oh, this is my pattern. And what's awesome about realizing that you've made a mistake it, or realizing that it's your pattern is that that's the one thing that you can control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like I can't control what this person ends up doing or how available they become to me. We can't and control the, anything about anybody. No, of course not. Yeah. And so how awesome, right? And, and I was giving advice to a friend, a very close male friend of mine whose therapist was like, have you heard about the Man Enough podcast? Yeah. Have you heard about Liz Plank? Uh, you know, like, and he was like, yeah, I've heard of her. She's one, you know, and there's many examples, right? Um, this is just one no, of them it's that's so recent. it's so sweet to hear that feedback. It mm -hmm. is, right? That therapists and, therapists and again, are using us a lot. we're not therapists. Like, we're not, you know, we are, we not are works therapists. in progress. But because. <laughs> but therapists are work in progress, works uh, in progress. Exactly. But the fact that we're sharing our mistakes, the mm. fact that we're sharing um, that we're not, that we haven't arrived, you know, and I was just on Style Like You, this interview series where you undress as they're asking you very uh, intimate questions. Wow. Yes. And they are actually coming on the podcast um, soon. So Lisa and Lily, one of the things that they t re reflected back to me was the fact that you're sharing these things um, is what makes you like a good feminist, whatever that right means. Mm -hmm. And and again, whether it's your son being like, I'm a bad kid or I'm a bad feminist or I'm a 
bad ally, yeah. um, that is not, that doesn't help, right? And it's not to say that we're not going to recognize the mistakes that we do or hold ourselves accountable when we do them, but literally nothing good will come from you loving yourself less. Mm. And loving, like, even when I feel like I'm at my worst and I've done the worst, if I start by loving myself, I will be guided towards the right action. Yeah. Mm. Um, Amen to that. And I think for me, just last little part is I was giving advice. A friend of mine who was having issues with his uh, wife called me. He was like, how do I be a better man? Like, how do I, you know, mm. he had uh, basically been he, very sort of lashing out and critical and uh, about her as a mother because they just had a baby. And he was like, I, how do I stop? Like, I'm beca- I'm this toxic guy like that you talk about all the time. Like, I don't want to be this guy. And, you know, what we realized through talking was like, you're stressed out about all these other things that you're not yeah. sharing with her. Yeah. And so it's coming out in this way that you don't even, you love her and you love her as a mother. Like, this isn't you, yeah. right? It's not the, the real you coming out. It's this suppressed anger and and suppressed stress that you're not sharing that that's um, transforming, yes, into this toxicity. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it's not the real you. And he was like, oh, like, you're right. And like, and he was going into like hating himself because of that. And yeah. I was like, no, you got to love yourself, even though you feel like you've done something horrible. Like, yeah. you got to love yourself. You got to care for yourself and be connected to your feelings so that you know what's going on mm. in those other situations. Because again, if you hate yourself, you're not connected with yourself. You're like, yeah. put, you know, you're getting away from yourself. And that's when, again, we're going to fall into maladaptive ways of expressing our emotions. Mm. Uh, thank you for sharing that. I'm really happy you shared that story because I've been that guy. I've been that guy, n- n- not not in the literal term of like d- doing that to my wife, but mm-hmm. I've been that guy who has reached out to a female friend and said, hey, how do I mm-hmm. stop? Or what's like, th- 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 I did this thing. I need some feedback. Yeah. Both when I was single a long time ago and also in my marriage. And I think that's so important that you were able to be there for him. I think this whole idea of like men and women can't be friends. Yeah. Like that, like, uh, <laughs> we are selling ourselves so short of such valuable and priceless feedback. Like what you just did for him mm-hmm. is so important because you didn't shame him. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of men, I believe, that are afraid to make that call because when you look at the um, the minority of what you see in social media, there's a lot of like man bashing and like, you know, women going after men. And I, and I think that some of it is just, of course, but a man, I think could very easily feel like, oh, if I am vulnerable with a woman and say like, oh, I just made my wife feel terrible that I might get bashed by Mm -hmm. my friend. And instead you did the opposite, which really is like grace in action. Mm -hmm. That's love Mm -hmm. manifest in deeds. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, He's beating himself up enough. You don't have to do that. Yeah. Well, that won't help. That's not going to help. It's not going to help her. It's not. It's not going to help anybody. Yeah. And it's Jamie. Uh, the way that Jamie, I feel like, approaches his friends is like that, right? Where very it's, much so. And he's talked about it on the show. Where I know m- who my friend is, and and I know the goodness in his heart, and the, his actions that day did not reflect the goodness that I know is inside of him. And I think it's that as friends that we can do, mm. and particularly for men in our lives. Again, his wife shouldn't have been the one that had to do that. And right. that's why I was glad that yeah. I could, could because I'm not the and one. she might have even said, call Liz. Uh, you uh, never know. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. There's a good chance she sure. said, call Liz. Sure. sure. And <laughs> yeah. good, you know, good And also, honor. kudos to the guy. Yeah. Kudos to the yeah. guy for making the phone call. Yes. Yeah. It was, yes. Like, that's brave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't know how you're going to respond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make the call. Okay, just switching over to Jamie real quick. Uh, as you know, you know, Jamie and I are best friends. And so we go through life together. We're work wives, work husbands. <laughs> um, Lucky me. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. We both had very hard years in different ways. But recently, I know, if you're comfortable sharing, I know you went through something uh, unexpected. Yeah, my that, my my work in progress. Yeah, you you my, have um, you have some work in progress that, that uh, we if you're all, comfortable sharing. Yeah, I'll share a little bit. I won't get into the great details. So I'll protect my um the other party. So I'm a good father. I got four kids. My daughter's now has a baby of her own. My daughter was on our podcast at least like came in over the phone and said such sweet, wonderful things about me that speak to that I'm a decent father that she loves. 
And yet that doesn't mean I'm, I've, I've arrived. I have a son who's 20, he's going to be 21 at the end of the month or next month. And uh, we bumped heads. We bumped heads really good. Yeah. Because he was finding his footing in his own life, making, torching his own path. And it didn't really align with what I th thought his path should be. I'm used to course correcting him since he was born. And then you blink and then your son becomes an adult. <laughs> and then you forget it's not your job to course correct him. And as a result, we um, had one of, I became um, my worst moment in parenting was on a particular day with my son. And I heard him, I heard his heart, but I was in it out of love, but in it, it was pretty, pretty big. It was really big. Yeah. A big um, fight, a big fight. Yeah. Just, yeah. N nothing physical. Sure. Nothing. But yelling or just things just, that were just, out of just, character just was, for you. Okay. And, and I, and, and I don't want to expose anything about him. He's mm -hmm. fine. He, the truth is this is what happened. So we went through it. Um, didn't speak for couple of weeks. And I reached out to friends, his friends, so that I could learn about my son. Fuck, man. I can learn about what he's feeling that maybe he didn't feel safe to share. And rather than hearing the stuff that I thought I was going to hear, which was, oh yeah, he needs to be course corrected over here. Oh, you're right for doing this. Oh, we're worried about him here. This, this, this. What all came back was, um, I think you're focused on the wrong things and rather you need to think about what he might be feeling of your belief in him, whether or not he's enough. The very thing we talk about, my son may have been feeling that I don't think he's enough. What the fuck, man? I mean, I'm, I champion, I, I believe that I'm really good at that with friends and my wife and people and my son who I love and adore who's so good was not feeling that I believed in him really ultimately. Um, so that, that hit me big. So I went through it for a minute and then um, I sent him a video of me apologizing and bowing my head and saying how wrong I was and that he is on his path. And that I, I, and my words are not because I don't believe in you. It's because of my lack of words or my lack of letting go. Or I didn't defend anything. I didn't talk about all the things, things I've done right. There's many things I've done right with my son. We've always been close. All I did was focus on the things that I could have done better and should have mm. done better. And I'm a work in progress and I haven't arrived as a parent. And that was a moment for me to reflect and like, now I got two little ones. I don't want to, I, I don't, would hate for my children especially my son who reflects me and I might have different expectations of him than my daughter as it pertains to being a man that as I am, I wouldn't want to ever, the idea that my son could feel that I don't think he's enough, my mm -hmm. God. So um, I learned a lot about myself in this period. Justin was, has been a beautiful, wonderful friend and reflecting back that I am a good father. And yet, just because you're a good father, just because you're a good man, just because you're a good husband, just because you're a good human does not mean that we don't stumble, does not mean that we can't still cause pain, does not mean that we still don't have to continue to do therapy. You know, my body is in pretty good shape, but if I don't work on it every single day, yeah. it will not be tomorrow. My marriage is in good shape. If I don't water it and put all the things and the ingredients that it needs to flourish, it will die. So parenting is the same way. Being a man is the same way. Being a father. Um, so that has been some of my work in progress. I think that, and just having witnessed that, you know, what's so great about why I love the three of us and doing this show together over the last two and a half years together, we've all changed so much and we've had so much growth and growth is not linear. Growth looks like taking a step back and then a step forward and two steps forward and three steps back. And yet, coming back to the why behind this, coming back to like, oh, we are humans. We are fundamentally enough. Like allows us to have the grace with ourselves and with each other 
to be able to take those steps back and then witness these five steps forward. And what I saw Jamie do was exactly what I had craved could have happened in my own family when I was that age. Like what I saw him do mm -hmm. as he, as he humbled himself and bowed his head and apologized to his son and said, you were more than enough. I was wrong with no defensiveness was healing for me would have been healing for you. And yet here he was, and he did that. Um, and it was such a, it was an honor to witness. And I saw, I, I was there the whole time you were raising your boy. Like I, you're an amazing dad. And yet even Jamie, mm -hmm. an amazing father who I look at as a role model had a moment. And you know, what's interesting. I could have been defensive. We all can be about our actions yeah. sometimes. Uh, some people could say, well, your son's making more out of it. Of course you've loved him. The truth is he's not wrong. He has every reason to believe that I didn't think that I didn't believe in him enough in, in many ways because, um, because he has, he has a reason. I, I wasn't aware that that's what was happening, but when you reflect and you go like, okay, that's reasonable. And how, how good could it be in our lives when we do with our wives and our relationships when we can acknowledge, yeah, you know, I understand why you feel that way. And what I learned in this process, you know, that I stumbled a lot throughout my life. I walk into any space, any room, believing that I belong. I've never that's doubted. How, that's how we differ. Mm -hmm. That's how Jamie and I differ, by the way. I, I believe that I belong in every situation, I, I, even in race situations where I know I don't belong because I'm black and everyone's white and I was made fun of, I still felt like I belonged. Like I didn't need your approval. Wow. No matter what the job is, I always do that. I assume that every woman that when I was, uh, when I was dating, I assumed every woman would want to date me. <laughs> That's how you should approach it, though. I just assumed. I mean, I may have been wrong, but I just have never yes. questioned. Because even when I stumbled throughout my life, not one moment did I ever not feel enough to my dad. Not one time. Never did I feel not enough. Mm. Never did I not think that he didn't believe in me. And my mother as well. I think that it's so important that we make those around us feel that they're always enough. Because I think it, it it translates to our lives and to our adulthood, you know. Um, mm. Doesn't mean that they can acknowledge that we've stumbled, and that they need we need some course correcting. Um, so I learned that too, just how important it is, and why I walk through the world yeah. standing really tall, is because yeah. I believe that I am enough. But I think that those moments of vulnerability, of weakness, like whatever you want to call it, your worst moment in parenting, which again, like I'm sure is better than 99%. Your worst moment was probably better than 99% of dads. Um, not to put down dads as a, but no, just no. that that you are, again, such a giving, nurturing father. And so I know that you have high standards for yourself. And so when you don't meet them, it feels, you know, like, like a big deal. You recognizing it and you, even this idea of like calling his friends to figure out more about how he's feeling, that, that like stopped me in my tracks. I, I mean, it's so, I mean, not, I don't want to put down my dad, but my dad doesn't even know like my friend's names. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and, and it's kind of a running gag, right? The dads are like, who? Like they kind of don't. And, and again, they are nurturing in other ways, but often they don't even really know who your friends are. And that's kind of, you know, they're a little bit out of the loop. Um, just the fact that you did that, the fact that you were so interested and curious about what does make him feel enough, which is how you feel about him, right? It's not that you were making him feel, it's not that the way that he was feeling is reflective of how you feel about him. And you corrected that, mm. right? You yeah. made sure that he feels the way that you feel and that that is properly communicated. And so to me, that's just so so mm. beautiful and, and, and amazing and and. And those moments are formative. That's what he's going to remember, even when you're gone. Yeah. Like that is going to be a moment, that video a, a, a is defining save moment. Forever. Yes, one hundred percent. Well, what I think is really sweet about what we're talking about is that we have listeners that are on their own paths and you know yeah. wanting to be better. We get so many letters and yeah. um, from people uh, that are on their path and for advice, and um, and we learn from them as well. But oh my god! For totally. us to also share that we are yes. a work Make in mistakes. progress. Yeah. And haven't arrived as to well. anybody listening. If you listen to a podcast, or you follow an expert, or you or you follow the author who wrote this self help book, just know that they're fucked up too. <laughs> That's why they wrote about it. <laughs> like, they got broken parts. Like just know that these life coaches that you go to, maybe you are one. The therapists that you go to, maybe you are one. The authors 
maybe you are one. What we all have in common is that we're trying to figure it out and none of us have arrived. The second we arrive is when we leave this body. This life is the workshop, as my mom always told me. Mm -hmm. Like this is, you know, this is, we are going to make mistakes. We're going to mess, mess up. Perfection is unattainable. Mm -hmm. It's unattainable. We'll never get there. If you're a guy listening to this and your goal is to walk through life and and never offend a woman or always be the perfect ally and always say the right thing, you are going to get in your own way and you're gonna stumble and fuck up and offend more people because you're trying to be so perfect. Mm -hmm. It's just never gonna happen. Um, and so just know that what matters and, and what I'm, I'm gleaning from my share and both of your shares is that what we should be striving for is, um, is just daily vigilance. Mm -hmm. just, just taking ourselves into account and like, oh, I said that thing, that didn't feel, it didn't feel like it was uh, like it was sincere or authentic. I should really think about why I said that. And then you do a little bit of self work, or you go in and you you take a few breaths, right? You reconnect with your breath, and then you move forward. If you're feeling like you're in fight or flight, find a way to take some time for some self care, so you can get out of fight or flight, so that you can process and make decisions from a place of of love and, and empowerment wholeness, yeah. and wholeness. Yeah. Because you, anything you do in your life when it's coming from a place of fear or when you feel like you're, you're on your heels because you're defensive or you're afraid to say the wrong thing is never going to be an authentic, sincere thing. And just know that you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Like, let that take a weight off your shoulder today. Like, you're going to make mistakes. And what we should strive for is to never be complacent. Like, we should never be okay just, oh, we've arrived, we've made it. Because the second that happens, what happens? Our bodies start to deteriorate. Oh, I'm good. I'm in shape now. I'm going to not work out anymore. Mm -hmm. No, do a five-minute workout. Go for a walk. Do something every single day, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and just know that we're never going to get there. Just keep working. It's about the journey. One last one last uh, thing. Please. When my wife and I went on this uh, this quick vacation, with our kids and we did this Temescal, which was this, uh, this ceremony in, in this uh, sweat lodge in Mexico, just the two of us. And it was crazy. It was wild. It was amazing. And what's a sweat lodge? It's what like is this, it's this, it's this, it's like this, th it's a, it's this ancient kind of Mexican shamanic tradition where you go into this sweat lodge and you're literally in, you know, it's like a sauna. Sauna. Okay. It's kind of like a sauna, okay. but you can't get out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you go on this and it's very spiritual in nature, but okay. there's one thing, it was a great experience, but afterwards the, the, I guess he was a shaman or the, the, the medicine man or the teacher, there was no drugs involved. This was just a, this was just a sauna. He said to us, uh, that wasn't the ceremony. This now is the ceremony. Mm. Mm, wow, beautiful. The ceremony is now. Yeah. Right. You know, I feel like we're, we're living at a time when so many people are going to search for these ceremonies. Like, oh, I need to do a ceremony or I need to, uh, you know, always, always trying to, to do the work. But when in reality, like the ceremony, the work is now, it's every day, it's this moment, it's tomorrow. This is the ceremony. This is the time where we're supposed to be in reflection and thinking and doing the work and, and going, oh, how can I be better? What can I do a little bit different? Oh, and also enjoying ourselves for God's sakes. Cause we forget to do that because we're so busy doing the fucking work, mm. which You're is another thing that I, fun. which is another thing yeah. that I've really been meditating on. So anyways, so I'll have to say, Beautiful. I'm so happy to be back. Um, and I hope in some way, something that one of us said was fruitful to you, our, our listener who we love and adore so much. Um, and just remember the reason why we started this, that who you are as you are is enough. <laughs> you are Jamie's enough. I'm enough. Liz is enough. Jamie's son is enough. And maybe somebody didn't tell you, maybe somebody forgot to tell you, but at the end of the day you are. And if nobody will tell you, then you have to find a way to believe it yourself. Reflect today for a moment on one person in your life. Maybe it's your spouse or your child or friend or work that maybe you can detach yourself from your ego and think about how you may have offended somebody and go to them and apologize randomly. Go to your wife and say a year ago, I remember blah, blah, blah. 
And I've thought about that today and I'm really sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's or beautiful. to your work or someone. And it will do something to you. Yeah. And then look at what it does to them when they unexpectedly get an acknowledgement from you of a way that you could have been better. Mm. And you see it and you recognize it. Um, I don't know. I think that would be a good exercise. Love that. Love that. It's a very freeing exercise for mm. everybody. Um, all right. Well, this was fun. So fun. Liz, I adore you and love you. I, I appreciate love you. you, how you um, navigate the world. You are in a space of being a feminist, being a woman who um, is honored and championed by so many for doing the work. And then you are also um, yelled at or something for doing the work <laughs> differently than the way they might. You are uh, like science, ever changing. You speak your truth today. And then a year later, you'll speak a truth that someone might say, wait, that's different than what you thought. And it's because you're like, science evolves. Mm -hmm. You know, we learn more. And then now my, my, I've awakened in different ways. It's not that I'm different than that. And then you, and you're really good at that. Um, and I appreciate you. Thank you for creating a safe space. I'm going to get a t-shirt that says Liz is like science. Liz is science. <laughs> I don't know. Can we make that? Hey, Justin, we're going to wrap up. Do you know, do you remember at all? how to close us out. No, I don't. Why don't you try it? If you like what you heard. Yeah, try out. Try, see. Oh, yeah. If you uh, like what you heard today. Why don't you back up? Let's just okay. go like, you know, like, let me be the director. Okay. okay. Sure. Back up a few lines. Okay. And sure. then go into it so you're not just starting on the line. Okay. Do you want to say action? Action. So if you like what you heard today, uh, you can... I don't remember the website. <laughs> <laughs> Manhuff.com slash podcast. Wow. Good job. Um, Muscle memory. There it is. By the way, if, uh, you're going to hear me coughing over the course of these next few episodes. I've had bronchitis um, for a week. Okay. Lucky so us. if you like what you heard, you can follow us uh, at manhuff.com slash podcast or listen to us wherever you get your podcasts. That's right. Like or Spotify. Apple. Yes. Apple. Or you can watch us. Where? on YouTube. Yes. The, the YouTube. It's still called that. Yeah. The YouTube. <laughs> uh, the YouTube. Wow. Liz, <laughs> thank you, Justin. Thank you. You're, welcome. Great You're a job. great director. Wow. wow. Yeah, don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> day jobs. There's a lot. All right, everyone. We'll see, you. we'll see you next time. Um, until then, I'm Jamie Heath. I'm Liz Plank. And I'm, I'm coughing. I'm <laughs> Justin Baldoni. And this is Man, Man Enough. Enough.